Hi everybody. Welcome into the beginner section. Today's video deals with the actual game of golf. What's the goal of it and how do we play it? Many of you have seen golf on TV. Maybe you've played a round of golf. Let's talk about three specific areas. The teeing ground, the fairway, the green, and there's a bunch in between. But we'll stick to those today. We'll get you out playing a hole and understanding what you're allowed to do where and how it works. This is the very basics. All right, here we go. All right, everybody, we're out here on a par five at the club at Kakuyula, and this is the tee box. At golf courses, the tee box is a closely mown area that signifies the start of a golf hole. You'll see tee markers. Here they're indicated with these, these bronze metal things. And the teeing ground is the only place where you can use a golf tee. First thing you're gonna need when you play a hole of golf is you need a club, you're gonna need a tee, you're gonna need a ball, and most people wear a glove to avoid blisters and to help them grip the club better. So we've got our tee, we've got our ball, here's our tee box. Let's talk a little bit about par. So par means the amount of shots that a really good golfer would take to get the ball from here into the hole. This specific hole is a par five, so they're saying it should take five shots. A drive, two shots from the fairway, and two putts. Now, there's all sorts of combinations that people make when they actually make a five or higher, but that's the idea when they design a par five, that you'd hit a drive from the tee, two shots from the fairway or rough, getting yourself onto the green, and then you would have two putts to put it in the hole. So here we are, we're gonna tee it up. When you tee up a golf ball, and this is a good nugget here, you want the tee between your index finger and your middle finger, and then you hold the ball with your thumb. You're gonna walk up, you have to tee up behind the markers within two club lengths. So <clears throat> I'm gonna tee it up as close as I can without being in front, set the ball on there. And then obviously there's other videos about how to swing, but we're gonna take aim <clears throat> at the fairway, set up and see if we can hit a good one here. Great shot. Should be on the left side of the fairway. So this is the teeing ground. Closely mown, it's usually a flat lie. You've got the tee markers and you're allowed to use a tee. Let's move on. All right, we've hit our drive off the tee box, which is just behind the camera. And now we pick up our tee as quick as we can. Unless we're playing with others, we let them hit as well, obviously. And then we're gonna head to the cart. When you get in the cart off the tee, bring your driver with you. You don't need to put it in the bag because of course you're gonna get something out of the bag in a moment. You get into the cart, put your driver here, hold on to it, drive with the other arm. All right, so we found the fairway here with our first shot, our tee shot from the tee. And we've gotta know how far we are away so we know what club to hit from our set. And we'll talk more about that in other lessons as well as how to swing. But this is just the process of playing a hole. So we've hit our shot, we've got our second shot. Now what can we do from here? Well, we're not allowed to tee it up. See, we have to play this one off the ground because this isn't the teeing ground. This is the fairway. It's nice to be in the fairway because it's closely mown. You can see just a few yards to the left, that grass is longer, it's harder to hit from. So I've got a, a Bushnell range finder and I think this is a great tool for every golfer to have in their bag. And you can use it to figure out the distance the ball is from the hole. 
Some golf courses will have GPS systems built into the carts so that um, that will tell you how far you are from the hole. It comes with a picture and a map so you don't get lost. But uh, if you're playing municipal golf, a lot of those courses don't have GPS systems, so it's good to have a range finder. So we're going to shoot this here right from the ball, and this will pick up the flag. And we've got 160 yards. Now it's pretty downwind this shot, so I'm not gonna hit my 160 club. I'm probably gonna hit like a 150 or 145 club. It's also downhill, so that's gonna take yardage off the shot and make, <coughs> make a different club go longer. So maybe my nine iron is my 145 club. It can probably go 160 with wind behind me and this much downhill. So we'll try that now. You may not be able to tell but the flag is between those bunkers. And those are, uh, those are you know, depressions filled with sand. For those of you who are real beginners, this is a video for beginners who are just learning how to play. And for me, as an experienced player, you know, I wanna hit it on the green and give myself a chance at making an eagle or a birdie. An eagle's two under par. So on a par five, that'd be a three, or a four on a par five would be a birdie. Those are good things that's gonna lower your score. But if I end up in one of the bunkers, not too bad because this is only my second shot and I still have a chance to two putt for par. So we'll see what we get. I've pulled the nine iron here. I'm hoping it'll go a little further than normal downwind and downhill. and I caught a bunker. Good thing the bunker was there because if it hit hard ground, it would have gone bouncing, maybe gone out of bounds. So we'll get to hit a bunker shot and talk about what you can do from a bunker and what you can. Let's talk about approaching the green. There's the green there. But over here, there's an indicator saying I need to drive over here and not drive my cart up in the approach. Golf courses will have ropes. Maybe they have a yellow ball. Maybe the GPS system on the cart tells you to go to the right. Whatever the case is, we wanna make sure we follow these rules so we can keep the golf course in immaculate condition. So we're gonna drive over here to the right of this yellow ball. Our balls ended up in that bunker there. Take the cart back to the cart path and park it in the cutout designed for the cart so that anybody trying to get by can get by. All right, so I'm parked on the cart path here next to the green. The green's just here. And I don't wanna spend time, wasting time coming back to get my putter. So I'm gonna grab both my putter and my wedge to hit out of the bunker, both from the cart right now. All right, so there's my ball in the bunker but the rake is over here. So I don't wanna waste time having to come out and get the rake and go back. So I'm gonna go and get the rake first. So I've got my rake and I'm gonna leave my putter just out of the bunker where I'm gonna exit the bunker. I'm gonna bring the rake in with me. So I got the rake and I can put it over here. And now when I come out, I'll just take my, my area. So when I'm hitting out of a here I just want my goal first is I just want to get this out of the bunker. now I'd love to have it but out of the bunker would be good here's what you can't do in the bunker you can't touch the sand with your club and test it that's a penalty you have to actually have your club float above the sand um, and you don't touch it until you actually take your strike so when you come into a bunker remember you're not allowed to ground your club or touch the sand beforehand like that. It's just supposed to sit above it. Let's see what we can do here with this one. Pretty good, almost hopped in. That was kind of fun. So now I've got my club and the rake. So you could do two things. You could toss your club out of the bunker into the grass or Grab the club and the rake together, rake up as one thing. Awkward to 
And if you're far where you can't toss your club out of the bunker, this is a good option. You don't want to leave any footprints and most of the time you want to push the sand away from you. You want to leave the bunker in a better condition than you found it, if at all possible, because there's going to be a golfer behind you and you want to give them the best chance to hit a good shot as well. All right, so we're gonna leave our club between the hole and our cart. Our cart's behind the camera, so I'm gonna leave my wedge over there. I'm gonna walk around to the green. All right, now we're on the green. We've hit a good bunker shot to about four or five feet. We've got our putter cover. What should we do with it? You don't want to lose it. I can't tell you how many people lose their putter cover every week. It's got to be in the millions. Take your putter cover and put it between you and your cart. So here's the edge of the green. I'm going to toss it over there. That's where I'm going to exit the green. Now, since 2019, you can leave the flag in when you putt. You can pull the flag out when you putt. I like to pull it out. So I'll take the, the flag out. I'll grab it by the flag so it stops flapping twist a little bit and pull it out of the hole. Now, where should I put it? Now I'm playing by myself, so I can put it pretty much anywhere, but most of the time, if you put it just close, but out of everybody's line, that's a good spot. So I'm gonna put it over there. So the flag's out. I like to take my glove off when I putt. Some people leave it on. Jack Nicholas left it on. He was pretty good, but I'm gonna take it off. And when I take it off, I Velcro it and I stick it in my back pocket with the fingers hanging out. Then it's easy to grab and put back on. So now I'm going to line up my putt. Looks like it goes this way a little bit. I'm going to aim at the right edge. And boom, there it is. Now when you grab your ball out of the hole, this is the other reason I like the flag out. I don't want to mess up. Up. So you grab with two fingers and your thumb or just two or three fingers and pull it out and disturb the rim of the cup. We want that to stay in the same condition for the next golfers. So we've looked at the teeing ground, we've looked at the fairway, how to pick a yardage, select a club, what to do if we hit it in a bunker, we got to rake up when we're done and leave it better than we found it, and what to do on the green. And of course the last thing is we're going to take the flag, put it back in the hole without touching the edges of the hole, and we're on our way. We'll pick up our head cover, our wedge, get in the cart, and head to the next hole. I hope this is helpful for you beginners looking to get out there and play. Have a great rest of your day.